Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. It's me, Mrs. Friedright. Listen, yesterday when we were learning about our art of shapes, I forgot to show you the print, and it was Juan Moreau's People Dog in the Sun. And your TK teacher has that print in with her other print, so she can show that to you. But today, we're going to be talking about form. And form is made with shapes that have been shaded to make them look like they're three-dimensional. That's the difference between a shape and a form. A shape, a circle shape, is flat. But a ball or sphere has form. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But let's start out with our hello song. Ready? Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello. Get ready, get set, go. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Now, the thing about form, I just told you it's a three-dimensional shape. And we know about the fruit, a pear. And we're going to paint a pear today, and it's going to be in a shape that we're starting out with two circles. But then the way we paint it is going to make it have three-dimensional look to it. So it's implied, they say. Sometimes it's real, sometimes it's kind of pretend or it makes you think it's real. That's when we imply it. So let's take a look at our print today and our artist. I'm first going to show you the artist on my lap because his information is on the back and we haven't really st studied Edward Hopper on PBS before, so I wanted to be sure that I told you some interesting things about him. He was an American artist and he used bright colors to make pictures of ordinary places. You might see one of them that's very famous that is in inside a diner and you're looking from the outside. Well, and when I show you the print today that we're looking at, it's of a restaurant also. Now, an interesting thing about the restaurant, there are two women working. Now, in the old days, women didn't get to work in the restaurants. Women were to stay home. And in restaurants in this time of when he was making this painting, they couldn't go to restaurants by themselves. They could only go to restaurants with their husbands. So we'll see in this picture a woman with her husband and then two women working. One woman is at the cash register taking the money from customers and the other one is fixing up the fruit that's on display. And you'll see there's little menu cards. In this restaurant, they didn't have menus. They had menu cards and it would tell you what you could order, this or that. There weren't a lot of choices. But this Edward Hopper was born in New York and he went to New York City to start to learn to do art at the New York School of Art. But then he started thinking that he just wanted to illustrate books. And he went and did that for a while. So he really understood about people's bodies and how they look when you draw them. And he also was learning about um, working at a studio in Harlem and uh, doing realism. So he, let's take a look at his print that we have up here. And I'll put him kind of sideways here until I can pin him up there. Now, let's take a look at his picture. It's called Table, Tables for Ladies. And here's what I was telling you about. Here's where they enter in the restaurant, and this is why I chose it. Because these grapefruits look real, because they shaded them to look like they were round. And we'll learn how to do that. And here they're showing the meat and the drinks, and here is the menu card. And the menu card is like on a blackboard, and they wrote with chalk on here to show what the prices were and what things are. And you can see they balanced it with two plants on either end of the counter. And here's the lady, the cashier, that's working at the counter when people finish eating, and she can take their money. And here is the couple. Now, 
this was right about the time after the Depression when they allowed women to go into restaurants and sit down, even if they weren't with their husbands. So that's a change in what they were doing in history. And Hopper wanted people to know about the change, and he did it in a painting. And you can see the clock up here. And this is a great painting called Tables for Ladies. And if you're in a Fresno Unified classroom, you will be able to see this print because that's what they have as one of their prints to study. Tables for Ladies. All right, the song we're going to sing about form is to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. And it goes like this. I am a form, I take up space, my three dimensions save my place. You can go around me, I'm deep, wide, and high. Go all around me and see all my sides. So form. We're going to be talking about form and doing a project about form. Let me set things aside. I told you I was going to use the primary colors red, yellow, and blue. And I also put a little white in there because when we're doing a painting that shows form, form you can really uh, can only see if light touches it. So in the dark, you can't tell that something has a form unless you're feeling it. But what we're going to do is draw, paint a little highlight on the front of our pair. So that's why I have some white paint. Let me set this aside because first it takes drawing our shapes that we're going to use for our form. I also brought some paper toweling because I found that once you're painting, if you want it to look a little textured, we will fold the paint, the paper towel and push it against our painting and just tap it around and it makes it look kind of textured, which makes it interesting. And you'll see on Friday when we talk about texture, how important it is to art. Now, I put a piece of newspaper on my workspace. That's to protect my little board. But then I put a piece of white paper here so that I can use that as my palette for mixing. And if I say, oh, I need it to be a little more blue or I need it to be a little more yellow, I can just dip down here and see what color I mixed. But I have a heavier piece that I'm going to use for my pair. I'm going to put this over here just so you can see how I'm starting this and this will be my blotter paper and palette. Look at my two circle shapes I brought. This is a little plate that I use for my toast in the morning and this of course is in my lunch box when I have um, things I want to keep in a small container. So I'm going to take this plate and put it at the bottom of my paper for the bottom of the pair and this will be at the top. Let me turn it so what you'll, you'll see. Here is the plate, there's a space, and then here is the top of my pair. Now notice, I'm not going to go all the way around this. I'm just going to about halfway and trace around about halfway. That's enough. Now, on this plate, I, same thing. I'm just going to go about halfway with my pencil. That should be good. Now it, you'll see it's easier now to make my pear shape. So then I take the end of this line and I just kind of go up to meet that little top circle. And I take this line and just kind of curve up to touch that one. Now I'm able to have my entire pear right here. The thing I do for something like this is I start with the background color because it just seems easier to make sure that my colors are clean and nice if I do my background first. So let me get my paintbrush that I've selected. I'm using a flat brush and it has a little straight across flat part. You have seen me use, because my favorite paint brushes really are the ones that come with our watercolor set, and they're a round head paint brush. I just find it holds more paint and I really like the, the way it paints. But today, this we really need because it is a straight edge. And I have my water right here. 
I'm going to put a little water on my brush before I go in to get the blue. Now I'm going to put the blue in the lid of my palette because I don't want it to be exact. And I'm going to get a little dark blue in there too. So I start on the edge of my piece and I pull away from the line that I had made. So I put it on there and put on the edge of my pair and pull away from there. And it makes like a straight edge rather than, because if I try and paint next to it, the bristles tend to poke out and don't make it look as great. And look what I'm doing. I'm going this way and that way and this way and that way once it's on there because it looks more interesting to have some darker areas and some lighter areas. And so I'm just making my paintbrush go every which way. Now I'm going to go back in and get a little more paint. And what am I doing? I set it next to the line and pull out. Set it next to the line and pull out. I wonder if I hold it up, if you can see I'm putting it next to the line and pulling out. So I'm going to get more paint on my brush, pull out. Oh, I didn't put it next to the line carefully. There, an extra, I'm gonna mix a little more. The blue, I put a little yellow in there, it made it a little green, because blue and yellow make green, and we're gonna talk about that too when we are doing the color day. And you notice I'm using a couple of blues, and you can make your blues a little darker by adding the darker blue, I have the turquoise blue paint and I have the dark blue paint. I'm trying to do this so that I do not get any paint on the furniture here at the studio. So I'm going to turn this a little bit this way. I might not paint the entire background right now so that we can see how we need to paint our pair. But remember what I said, I'm going this way and that way and this way and that way. Edge out edge out. You can see now my pencil mark. I don't think you can see the pencil very well when I'm first drawing it, but once I get the paint near the edge, you can see the shape of my pair. And you say, hey, that's where the plate was. Hey, that's where the little orange dish was. You can tell where I set my paintbrush on the edge and pull out, paintbrush out edges. Now I'm going this way and that way and this way and that way and this way and that way. I'm trying to cover up most of the um, white paper. If any shines through, I don't mind that too much. I might even add a little white on this. Give it another color to put in there. Oh, that looks good. And I use kind of my brush over and over again until there's no paint left on it. Dip in, put in, get a little more blue and mix it up a little bit but I don't make it mixed up so much that it doesn't have some variety of color. I will end up having to put my um, stem on there, but I can paint over the top of this blue when it's dry. So you may not get to see my stem or my leaf. Um, maybe I will draw the leaf so I can make sure that I don't make any part of it green. I'm going to do a leaf up here and I'll put the stem here. So I remember that I want to make that kind of a brown color. All right, a little more blue on the edge and pull out. See, isn't it interesting how you can see my pear shape now that I have so much blue on the edge? Blue, edge and out, edge and out, edge and out. And in here, I have to go next to the leaf a little bit. So I'm going to do it that way, this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way all around the edge. I'm liking how I'm making mine go this way, that way. It makes the background have some texture and you can see it a little better. And I can do the edge over here. Get next to the pear, next to the pear, and between the leaf. If you have to use a smaller brush for that part, it's okay. So don't worry if you have a big brush and you think, oh, I can't do it, get in that little space like that, Miss Reed, right? Then what do you do? You say to yourself, oh, I know. I'll just get a smaller brush. So I'll put this here and out, next to the leaf and out. Are you feeling like your paintings are going well? Now, boys and girls, if you don't have paints, 
You can do this same thing with crayons. You'll just draw around the two circle shapes. You will color and just use the side of your crayon and shade the back because it's hard to color back and forth, back and forth so much if you do not have paints. And if you have watercolors, you could use those too. They're just not as easy to cover such a big area. So if that's your problem today, just get a smaller piece of paper. Okay, I'm ready now to start my pair. There, my background is all finished. I'm going to turn it to you, keep it away from the upholstered chair, and I'm going to set this brush down and use a different brush because I don't, I don't have any color in my water yet. And if I get my blue brush into this water, then every time I need a little water, it will be um, colored with blue. So I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow in the lid, and I need to make a green so that some of the pear is a yellowy color and some is a little light green. So I'm going to go around here and just paint in. Usually it's a best idea to leave your background and let it dry before you get to that. So you'll notice I'm staying away from my edge and I'll fill it in once my blue paint is dried. But right now, I'm doing this so that I don't mix up all of my color with the blue, because then it will make the whole pair more green than um, yellow and yellow green. So I'm just mixing in some. Some of it has some light green. And I have to decide which side of the pair I'm going to pretend that the light source is coming from. Like if it was um, a lamp over there, or something like that, because sometimes people are painting these things out in the um, outside, and you can have just have the sun be your light source. But in the studio, they have lots and lots of bright lights so that you can see what's going on. So I can't say which way the light's coming from other than straight from the top, because that's where the all of the lights here at the studio are. So now I've painted in pretty close to my edge. I haven't gotten too close to that blue, and a lot of it's already starting to dry. But now this still looks pretty flat, like a shape rather than a form. So what I need to do is mix up a little more green, and remember what colors those are. It's the blue and the yellow, and I can just use the blue that we used before. And I can say, there we go, that's a pretty dark green. And I'm going to say the light is coming from this direction in this way. So this side of the pear is going to be lighter. The one that's sitting on the table and on this side is going to be a little darker. So I bring my green paint in and kind of go along the edge like that, all on the side opposite of my light source. And it makes it look more roundish and especially if I do it in a curved way. Now I'll do a little bit more on the bottom so that you can see that it's sitting on the table and that kind of makes it have a shadow also. So I can do this all around the edge and make my shadow. And do you see? Let me hold it up so you can see it a little bit. Do you see how it now looks more like it has a shape? of form because it has the green on the side. Let me lay it back down. And now I'm going to show you that I'm going to do a darker green for my leaf. And on the leaf, I'm going to go on the edge and make the leaf be a darker green than the pear itself because you don't want everything to look the same because it won't look that realistic. And this project, I wanted it to be more realistic. Now the bottom of my leaf is going to be a little darker because it's in the shadows more. So when that happens, I did that and I went over for the lighter green and I'll do that part on the top of the leaf. Pull it down and have it have a shadow and some form. Now, in order to make it darker still, I brought some red to mix up my own brown kind of color for the stem 
and other pieces. So let me put a little bit of red because if you mix red with green, it will make a, a muddyish kind of brown. And if I like it, I think, oh, that looks good, but do I need more green in it to make it more brown? Because the red makes it kind of rusty colored and the green and blue make it a little more brownish. So let me mix that in and make it a little darker for the, let's see if I put it on here. Oh, it's a nice brown. So I can just put that right on top of my stem and make the painting of the stem different from the blue background. And I can make a little bit going up the leaf a little brown, and I can put a little bit of shadow with the brown on the edge of the leaf, a little bit like that. Now, a little bit of brown might be nice for the shadow as well, but I have to make sure that my brush can get clean a little bit because otherwise all of that Brown is too dark, and if I mix it over across like that, it makes it a little better. And I do like how that is. I'm going to put a little more brown down on the bottom of my pear, make the shadow show even more. I can mix it up with my yellow. And remember how I talked about I wanted to use my paper towel to make some texture? I'm going to put a little water on my blue paint, not a lot, and I'm going to show you how I like to do the texture on my painting. Oh yeah, that looks good. And I can just go around and put the texture on my blue part around the edge. Very, very, very good. Now, when I told you also about the light source, I am going to get another brush and use it to put a little light shine on this side of the of the pear. So it looks like, oh, a little light is shining on it, and it's making the pear be a little shiny in that one spot. So let me hold this up so you can see it a little better and show you how this is going. And I'll put a piece of paper behind it because it's a little wet now. And I wonder if, the, if I put this down a little farther. There we go. And turn it a little bit. And you can see how I shaded the side away from the light. And I put that white spot on the edge of the pear. And I can go through if I want a little more texture too. And add a little white to my blue part too. And see if that, I like the looks of that. Because this is the light source. Not sure I do. I think I'll add the blue and cover that up because I think it made it look too, I don't know, too pastelish maybe. We'll see how it looks when I mix it. Yep. And then I can go back in and get near the edge again because I told you I didn't go near the blue because it wasn't dry yet, but I can go around with my blue paint and fill in there. Boys and girls, let me tell you about tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be using a brown grocery bag. The brown grocery bag is going to be our piece of paper because I enjoy seeing a painting where we use white paint on brown paper. Sometimes on, I know that PBS had that family fall festival and we made some banners that said fall on it and I used white paper as the letters because I think a brown paper bag with white on it looks really good. So we'll use the brown paper bag. You'll need to bring scissors because what we're going to do is cut the bag up the seam, cut the bottom of the bag off, and open it up to be a long banner. And what it's going to be is we're going to be mixing colors because we know that those primary colors can make all the colors that we want to use. So you can bring these same colors we use today of paint. I want you to bring all of these paints, your brushes, your water, and your brown paper bag, and we'll mix colors to make a banner of line and pattern and shape. So if you're ready to do that with me tomorrow, have those things with you. And we'll sing a real quick, 
Um, goodbye to all my friends. I'm going to move this down here so that I can use my legs as my rhythm instrument. So get yours ready. If you have paint on you, make sure you're not touching anything that's fabric. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Boys and girls, thank you for learning this week about line, shape, color, form. Tomorrow, see you. Bye-bye.